is uh, um, uh, so this is the primate information. So the, the, sorry. So this will be let's separate them by line. This is what is on the board, right on what is on Facebook pages of uh, these two guys. But what do they think? The first guy definitely thought one because he wrote one and he has no, uh, no other opinion of no one else, right? But for this guy, there are two possibilities, one and zero. And we know that the third guy sees a zero. So then this probability, right, the probability of one, one, zero, given one, will be equal, the first probability, one, zero, zero, uh, plus probab so probability one, one, zero, plus probability of uh, one, one, zero, right? So this is P times one minus P squared, but here we have to multiply by one half because he had to toss the coin because he sees uh, the second guy believes zero but sees one, so he tosses the coin and the coin tells him to write one. So it's uh, P times uh, <coughs> uh, one minus P squared, but also one half for the probability of the coin toss, right? Plus, and here you have a probability P for the first to see correctly and for the second to see correctly, no coin toss neither, and times one minus P, right? So this gives you precisely what we wrote here. What we have on the bottom is exactly what we have on the top, because that's one option. The second option is assuming that the fact is false. So if the fact is false, that's probability one half, right? And this again could have happened in two cases. We know that uh, the first guy must have thought that it is true. One, but this guy can still think either one or zero. And we know that the third guy uh, thinks uh, zero. Now, in the first case, uh, both of them think one, so it will be, and it's false. So it's one minus p squared <laughs> times p because this guy thinks correctly, right? So voila, <coughs> one minus p squared times p plus when you have the coin toss is when you have one zero zero. So this will be one minus p times p times one half, right? Uh, because of the coin toss and times p. And that's precisely what we have here. Okay? So this is all from the textbook. Uh, uh, please read it carefully. It's uh, explained uh, uh, in great amount of detail. Okay, and after we do this calculation, we get the probability that one is true uh, is larger than probability that zero is true given the evidence. So this means that the moment uh, two people say uh, true, true, regardless of whether the fact is true or false, the third person, if he acts rationally, will just fall. And as I say, this might not be realistic in practice, but it's a, it's a good kind of analysis of how information cascades. Maybe in real life you need to see more than two of your friends claiming something to, uh, to be enough to sway your opinion, right? So uh, this is, uh, it's a very good model as what actually happens on the web. Okay, so let us now compute the probability of a cascade at all to happen. What is the goal of all of 
this. But the goal of this is to estimate, really to see how fake news and how uh, rumor uh, spreads to, um, <coughs> through the net, right, through social media. Um, and you can do it in kind of two ways, uh, right? Because social media is not a amorphous. Uh, you have the notion of uh, neighbors because you can be friends with someone, right? And you can post or they roll. So there is underlying network. The social networks have underlying topology. So what we are going to do is first we will uh, see how things propagate without uh, taking into account the topology, assuming that uh, everyone can read everyone's posts, right? And um, uh, regardless of whether you are connected with them or not. And then we will uh, analyze what happens when you put uh, uh, the topology uh, of the net, of the social network into play. Uh, but uh, you are, trust me, you are very likely to encounter this kind of stuff um, in, in, when you go to work for a company. Uh, what do you think? Why would companies care how information spreads through social media? That's one and probably the most important fact, right? If you piss off one customer or two customers, then people will cascade and your image can be gone. So that's one aspect. You are very concerned how your rating propagates through the net, right? And you want to take as much information as possible and this is why the companies actually pay to get uh, uh, data uh, of links in the social network so that uh, uh, you can get more accurate uh, information how it's read. But what is, so that's a negative kind of uh, incentive to, uh, to worry about how things spread on, uh, on social media. What do you think, what is the positive uh, so this is what can destroy company, but how can a social spread of social infor of information to social network be extremely valuable tool to grow your company? Exactly. So it's crucial for marketing, right? And marketing costs money. You cannot send e spam email to everyone uh, you know on the web. So for you, if you have the link structure, it's crucial to see uh, what, what are the users that, uh, from whom the information can spread as uh, fast as possible. And so what companies actually do, they pay people that are well connected to advertised products, right? So you might think, gee, who cares about two people believing something about Donald Trump? Trust me, it is not about Donald Trump, it's about money, right? So in fact, uh, uh, you would be amazed to what level uh, people actually analyze uh, the social networks for marketing purposes. Uh, and there is such a thing as journal of marketing and you would be amazed uh, how much probability uh, uh, there is. Uh, and this is where you make the money. If you understand uh, this basic probability and how to use it uh, uh, to direct marketing uh, campaigns, uh, right? Or to fix your bad image. Uh, that's absolutely of crucial importance for companies. Uh, and of course, nothing of this existed only 10 years ago, right? So 
or it, it was far less important. But uh, nowadays we live in information age where information is uh, money. <laughs> As our fear, fearless leader Malcolm Turnbull uh, wants to point out rightly, right? <clears throat> Okie okay, dokie, so let us now see what is the probability. You see, so here we didn't say um, <clears throat> whether the fact is true or false, right? We simply computed given the evidence that two guys thought uh, the fact is true and one guy thought that uh, the fact is actually false but was swayed by the votes of the first two guys, right? So um, this is completely independent on whether the fact is true or false. So let's see what is the probability of cascade. Uh, what is uh, the cascade? The cascade is now obviously, if the third person votes also yes, you have three ones and then fourth person will of course have even higher probability to think one is true and uh, so everyone starts thinking uh, that the fact is true. So let's see what's the probability of cascade. Well, probability of cascade is probability to get two zeros plus probability to get two consecutive ones, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So this is <coughs> Excuse me. this is equal to probability that one is true, right? Times probability of the um, of the outcome uh, zero zero. Right, assuming that one is true, um, plus probability uh, that the, the uh, uh, fact is actually false uh, times probability of the outcome zero zero when um, <coughs> this is uh, uh, false. When, I mean, when uh, assuming that the fact is false. Plus, we have the same analysis for 1, 1, which will be P of 1 times P of 1, 1 given, uh, given 1, plus P of 0 times probability of 1, 1 um, given 0. Right, and uh, you can now substitute you can do exactly the same calculation that uh, uh, we did before. So if one is true, probability to get two zeros is one minus p times one minus p. So this will be, uh, let's so write, so it will be one half times uh, 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 one minus p squared plus one half and then here you have uh, uh, p squared plus and so forth so that we don't do the calculation here it turns out that the probability of cascade when you compute everything is 1 minus p times um, Uh, 1 minus p. <clears throat> so you can see <clears throat> that uh, this is, we assume that p is a little bit more, that is more than one half, but then this is smaller than one half, so uh, this probability of cascade will be actually pretty large. Okay, so, but this means that the probability of no cascade, right, is equal to p times 1 minus p. But this is just for first two people. 
So uh, let's see probability of cascade uh, given uh, n pairs. Uh, right? Uh, let's assume that uh, 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 that it is uh, that n that the number of people is even to simplify the notation. What will be this? Uh, well, this will be uh, equal to, um, let's see, uh, probability that you get first a bunch of 1, 0, 1, 0, or 0, 1, right, when they kind of cancel out, and then you get 1, 1, or 0, 0, right? So, uh, this probability will be equal to uh, p times 1 minus p uh, to the power uh, n minus 1, right? This would be uh, the probability no cascade, no cascade, no cascade times probability uh, that the cascade happens, and we saw the probability that cascade happens in 1 minus p times 1 minus p for the next pair. Right? And uh, uh, what is then the total probability of the cascade? So, assuming that you have lots of uh, uh, users, then probability of cascade um, in total uh, is uh, uh, approximately equal sum from n equals 0 from n equals uh, uh, 1 to infinity right or some very large number n we can then just assuming we can majorize this with the sum up to infinity of uh, this uh, 1, uh, sorry, p times 1 minus p to the power n minus 1. Let's put, uh, instead of infinity, let's put some fixed large number n, right? Th that the whole thing times 1 minus p times 1 minus p. And that's easy to sum because this is just a geometric progression with this quotient. So you get that this will be um, this will be um, one minus uh, p times one minus p divided by one minus. Um, Oops. Ah, okay. Times one minus uh, p times one minus p to the power uh, n plus one divided by one minus p times one minus p. If I haven't made a mistake, and now you can see as n. It's actually capital M, you said here, right? Because this is smaller than M, this rapidly goes to zero. These two cancel out, so the whole thing rapidly uh, goes to one, right? Because this goes to zero, this goes to one. So you are, if you have lots of users, uh, you are almost guaranteed uh, that eventually cascade of information will happen, right? <clears throat> now, notice uh, then uh, we assume here the probability of being true for all users is the same. So for your homework, you can split this uh, into all users having the same probability plus one single user that has much higher probability to be true. 
And then you can see how the probabilities change depending on where in the chain this user is. And you will see that he's farther down the chain he is more he will influence the probability of the cascade um, of information. So um, that's uh, uh, that's this kind of taken into account uh, when you want to manipulate people's opinion. And you know, this is really extremely important. Uh, you know, just to give you a kind of the Ricky example, because it also involves uh, our media. Very often in the media, you see that the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. And if media repeat that, then information cascade happens and people really believe in that. But just look what's happening in Iraq. You know, it's a breeding ground for terrorists now. Right? So maybe Saddam was really a bad guy, but for my own safety here, I really don't care whether he was a bad guy, but if you are permanently told something, then uh, you know, in fact, in Nazi Germany, the Minister of Propaganda, Goebbels, said that if you repeat it often enough, it becomes true. And that's precisely the reason why, namely the cascade of information. And this uh, also um, explains this uh, kind of herding uh, mentality of humans, uh, when you see that lots of people from your surrounding think X, it's very difficult. You have to really have strong character to keep your opinion and not let this wait. And this is important, for example, when people decide, you know, there are all these software that mines uh, chat rooms about when people discuss uh, their opinion about stocks, right? Uh, because people do get swayed by uh, uh, what majority thinks, uh, and uh, uh, for uh, brokerages, uh, that's a valuable information, namely how the, uh, what is the, this is called the sentiment. Uh, Right now, the difficult part of obtaining sentiment is that you have to do it manually. Uh, one of the, uh, a big company that was eventually sold, the Australian company that was sold to Dow Jones, they tried to make a software uh, that will automatically detect the sentiment uh, in uh, blogs and social networks. And the accuracy of their software after two years of development, I know a person who, who was uh, the head of the research, the accuracy of the software was one half. So it was equally good at just uh, tossing a coin rather than performing complicated natural language processing. So I don't know, maybe with uh, advances in uh, AI, uh, this will improve. Uh, uh, but at the moment, uh, we don't seem to be... Um, okay, so you get the gist of uh, um, how the information uh, propagates. Uh, you can compute now, so in the same way, uh, Uh, you can compute uh, when uh, probability of cascade that is true. So when people really, the cascade that results in a correct uh, value uh, under our assumptions happens to be, uh, and you can see the derivation in the book, one minus P, uh, times 1 minus p over 2 divided by 1 
minus p times 1 minus p. And the probability of cascade uh, to be false, it happens to be, oh sorry, this is uh, false. For false and probability for true uh, is uh, equal to p times 1 minus p uh, over 1 minus p times 1 minus p. So take your favorite computational software Mathematica MATLAB, or uh, you can do it easily in Python, right? And plot these two uh, to see how things change when you vary the uh, probability p, how accurate the, um, the people are, and try to figure out where the tipping points are uh, when these two are likely to be uh, equal and how fast uh, this grows uh, if p grows. Um, okay. So now let's see the probability of emperor's new clothes being non-existent. So cascade, so what we saw is uh, that the cascade of information happens almost inevitably, but in how persistent it is uh, once the cascade uh, happens. What if there is one kid who yells the emperor is naked, uh, right? Let's see what happens. Uh, Well, assume that we have long cascade of ones. Everyone says that the emperor has a gorgeous, has gorgeous new clothes, right? And then suddenly a kid yells, emperor is naked. And you are the next person in line after the kid. And to you, it does look that emperor is naked. But if you look at all these people, there is a huge number of people who claimed that the emperor has wonderful new clothes. Who should you believe? A single kid who might be wrong, or all these people that said the clothes are wonderful. Right? Well, let's compute. Um, first of all, how would you reason? First, you see this huge number of ones. But you, being a rational agent who can do probability, you saw that you can discard all of these ones because they are cascades. They were caused by the, the effect of just these two starting ones. So for you, you can ignore all the ones except the first one, you have what kid said, and you yourself see that the emperor is naked. And you want to truthfully say whether, you, whether the emperor is naked or he has wonderful new clothes. Well, how should you reason? Um, you can say, you can see that this situation can happen in two cases. So we know 
that these two guys, the first really thought that Ender has wonderful new clones. Huh? But the second could have thought both that the emperor is naked and the emperor has new clothes. If, right? Uh, but the kid who yelled zero, he must have seen zero. Now we have two options. One, one, um, and you see zero, right? One, one, zero, zero. Uh, and uh, here, the option is that uh, uh, actually it's one, zero, 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 right? So uh, if you um, if you compute explicitly the probabilities, uh, you will see that in fact. Uh, in, in fact, the probability that emperor is naked is larger than the probability that he has clothes, right? Which means uh, that uh, it takes just two people ex to see that emperor is naked, but one of them has to say, have courage to break the sequence, long sequence of ones. Right? So he, this is the pivoting one, and after that one, uh, the, if the next person also sees zero, the cascade uh, uh, will be broken down. So cascade of information can form very quickly and easily, but then it breaks also, it can be broken uh, quickly and easily providing that someone has guts to contradict the uh, opinion of uh, the majority. Okay, now. Um, okay, so what we want to do is uh, Further, how you can see it as a case of uh, spreading fake new fake news or spreading a disease, uh, we can look at the dynamics of uh, how, for example, computer viruses uh, uh, propagate. And again, we can do that uh, in two ways. First is with uh, while ignoring the topology of the network, and more sophisticated way when we take into account the, the topology of the network. So that's our next topic of interest. Uh, So you see, um, this is essentially how um, how fashion comes into being, right? Um, you see, uh, as much as, for example, um, Apple computers can be uh, overpriced uh, or iPhones, uh, you know the ma profit margin of iPhones is absolutely staggering. It takes something on the order of magnitude, if I remember it correctly, less than $200 to make an iPhone that sells for $1,000. So Apple margin is absolutely outrageous compared to rest, right? And you bet that, or for example, something that will never stop shocking. Apple says uh, the new craze, which is the iWatch. Guess how much is a simple leather, how do you call it, bracelet is it, uh, for your, for an um, iWatch? Uh, just simple piece of leather. What do you think? Sorry? 
200 bucks here it is. Like I could probably consider buying it. It's of, I think it's I think about 250 bucks. And it's a piece of leather. You can make it at best for 10 bucks. But you know what? If they sell it for $200, it must mean that people are actually buying it, <laughs> right? So it is, uh, you know, I watches and uh, similar things are kind of a social disease that can be studied by means of uh, epidemiology, right? And similarly, spread of computer viruses, there is no, well, <coughs> Uh, it is very similar to what happens with uh, disease. Uh, uh, so we will consider two um, paradigms, right? Here will be a small community, for example, like my grandmother's village, that everyone knows everyone, and someone brings a uh, new disease uh, to the mountain, how is the disease going to spread? That's one point of interest. The other is, uh, well, this little village is pretty isolated, and it's true, everyone knows everyone there, but few people know people outside of the village. So you can have communities uh, that are fairly localized uh, with limited communication only with a few neighboring communities, okay? And uh, we want to see how the disease uh, spreads uh, in uh, uh, taking into account the topology of the network. And one just small scale when you are considering what happens in a, a single community, right? Now, um, if you are a marketing person and you have a social network, you might consider giving a free, say, iPhone or iWatch to a person who is then going to write a raving uh, account how great uh, the